Hi everybody, Jacob here. Welcome back to the Fashion Bunker. Today we have a Vivian Westwood unboxing. I'm so thrilled. So happy this lady is alive and with us and I wish her another thousand years of life and prosperity. May she grace us with great incredible designs. And I'm super excited to share what I got in here with you, plus a little bit more. So stay tuned because, you know, when I do an unboxing, it's not usually just one piece. There's a little bit more of a story behind it. So first, subscribe to my channel if you haven't already here in the tubes. Push the join button next to the subscription button. Become a member today and gain access to extra perks. You can also join me on Patreon. Super Deco well spelled together there as well for extra perks. Thank you to my members and patrons who have already pledged. Mm. This video is being filmed live in front of a live virtual audience. I live stream every Saturday and you're all welcome to join me uh, in the live stream and in the live chats for the conversation. <clears throat> Y'all, let me tell you where it's at. So first and foremost, uh, let me cue in the chats. Why not? Let's have the chats together with us. Okay. Now, listen, <laughs> I have several pieces here. One piece, it comes in these pouches now. Chanel, take a cue. Take a cue. This is how you do it. Um, this is how we do it. So these are beautiful little cotton pouches made in Kenya by the artisans in Kenya, part of the ethical uh, fashion uh, project that uh, Vivian Westwood does in Kenya. So you have these little cotton pouches woven in that uh, classic shuka style that uh, they do in Kenya. Now, Inside this one comes this beautiful piece who, you know, is one of my members or patrons might have already seen this, uh, but I'm showing it now to you guys as well. It is a very heavy brass keychain heart with a Vivian Westwood orb on it. So they kind of, you know, melted it and poured it into the shape. This is the classic Vivian Westwood heart tilted to the side. And uh, I wear it on pants, and it is a very, very beautiful gold piece. So I hang it kind of, you know, where the belt would go through. I hang it, and it kind of—I don't put keys on it. This I just literally use this as a, you know, on my on my pants. But you could also wear it as a necklace. Super cute. But anyway, so that's one of the pieces I got. Now the second piece. I cannot really show it to you. It's also in a pouch. I can't show it to you because, well. It's one of those famous Vivian Westwood pieces that are, mm, well, depict male genitals. So she's famous for it. So let's just say I'm going to show it's a bracelet. It's a black leather bracelet. Uh, you could, it has the, don't poke out, y'all. Okay. So you can, it has two sizes here, right? You can close it like that or open it and just close it on one. And it does have the orb on the buttons. This one is also made in Kenya. And then the charm attached to it is also in silver. And, uh, well, we cannot really show it unless, of course, you are a member of the channel and you have access to that special video where I did show it. <laughs> so let's just say it's hanging there. Uh, in the other video, you can see it fully. And... Uh, And the funny thing is, it's banana shaped. <laughs> so whenever it lands on the bracelet, it's standing upwards. It's hilarious. I love it. Very punk. And it looks really good. So anyway, so there's that. But of course, there's more. Now, this is the piece de resistance of this unboxing. And we are... So excited about this. I can't wait to try it on. But before I get to it, I want to show you something else I found. This thing is amazing. Now, you know that a couple of days ago, I reviewed Moschino's bubblegum toy perfume. And I have the 100 milliliter bottle. It's like a teddy bear, a pink teddy bear bottle with a teddy bear head. It's chunky. It's heavy. It's, a, it, it's big. It's like a you know whole teddy bear. Well... I love the smell of that bubble gum. And now for travel, I discovered that they also do this. So I had to get this little monster as well. It's the Moschino Toy Bubble Gum 10 milliliter eau de toilette. Isn't this adorable? Check it out, y'all. How cute is this? Let me open it up. You're going to see. I mean, it's so funny because, of course, like this skinny a shape like it can't have the body of a teddy bear it's like a really morphed teddy bear no ah, it's so cute it still has the teddy bear head but 
it it has uh it's it's a glass uh bottle that's spray painted in pink with the text the font in in silver so you do have the picture of the teddy bear in silver there right with the whole bottle but then the head is the st this is so cute for travel omg and it's a spray and you get the little teddy bear yeah like a pez dispenser so you get 10 mil of the perfume in here Oh, you have that as a set with the lotion. So cute, says Cheesy Chips. Super cute. I know, Jesus. The mini has the head as well. It's so cute. So I think adorable. Anyway, I had to get it. It's it, Plus, it smells so youthful and, and fun and carefree. It's really, really cool. Okay. Anyway. Oh. Oh, and then I forgot to show you, when I was in Australia, oh my God, this is very Twin Peaks, I got this pouch, right? It's it's kind of like locally artisanally made, and uh, look how beautiful it is. We got these little twin koalas. It's giving me total, like, talpa, like the koala and its doppelganger uh, with the red hues. So I got this at Hanging Rock. You know, I love the movie Picnic at Hanging Rock. Um, Fusion of Cultures. Oh, no, I'm, I'm really bad at pronouncing it. Yakino Gun... Gunichmara Dreaming. And I know there's a way to pronounce this. So, you know, somebody who's Aussie knows how to pronounce it, but I'm not good at that. I got an echidna. Like, beware, echidna crossing sign. <laughs> so I love echidnas. They are adorable. Little Australian creatures. So a little like, echidna crossing sign. And, you know, I love my pins and badges. I had to get, uh, well, they call it a hat badge, but, you know, where it is a normal pin. A uh, hanging rock in pewter. A hanging, like, you know, this is the actual hanging rock in pewter. This is such a beautiful piece. Pin in the back. So, got these little beauties here to remember Australia by because I loved it so much there. Especially hanging rock was amazing. Now let's get to this little beauty here, which uh, I, yeah, you're, well, you're going to see. Australia loves you, Deco, and I love I love you too. Whoop, whoop. Okay, so first first of all, <laughs> it's it's all wrapped in plastic. Yes, they do give you plastic, even though it's a Vin West, but not very sustainable. But you know what? If it's going to protect this delicate piece inside, I'm really fine with them giving it to me in plastic, because I'm not going to throw away this plastic. I'm going to keep it. But it does also come with a cotton pouch, so that later on, uh, you can you know, hold it in your cotton pouch. I think this is recycled cotton. Does it say inside? No. No, they don't tell you where the pouch was made. Smells good though. <laughs> Smells like good cotton. <laughs> I love Vivian's cotton pouch, it says Cyber Coco. Okay, y'all, let me open this. In love. I, and you know, with Vivian, they always do these things in different colorways. Um, but I got it. Okay, I'm going to unwrap it. little ASMR moment. I got it in silver. I got the ginormous choker. Uh, in the with the pearl, the silver pearls. What's it called? The Nasa necklace. Well, they call it necklace here, but they call it choker on the website. Uh, it's ginormous. the The pearls are really, really big. They're like you know resin pearls. They're not real pearls, obviously. Uh, and then you get the crystals and this chunky metal orb with the logo in the back. Now, obviously, this is going to kind of decay on my skin <laughs> because I'm going to wear it. You know, I always say never wear costume jewelry on your bare skin because metal is going to oxidize if you sweat and stuff. So this one is kind of bound to get ruined on my skin because it's very tight on me unless I don't get a extension. So let me try to put it on and show you how it looks. I could extend it and make it hang a little bit lower, but it's really the height of a choker. So, okay. But it feels very substantial. 
whatever that means. Okay, hold on. Kev says, I love this. Yeah, it's a beauty, but it is tight. Now, if you have a very skinny neck, you can, of course, you know, it's going to lay really low on the collarbone. Like I've seen pictures of this necklace and it's like, like down here. But what do you guys think? Honest opinion, like should it, you know, wait, hold on. Now, obviously I can wear it with a shirt or I can wear it with a t-shirt maybe. No? Maybe we can pull it off with a t-shirt. Coco Kitty says, Marge Simpson sized pearls. Yes, very much, very much. <laughs> so I can just pull the hair to the back. Do I have anything here at the moment to hold my hair together? I do for a quick fix. It's supposed to be a choker, but if you like Google it on their website and all, it's like it's very, it's like it's very, it kind of hangs up to down here, right? Do we like it? Are we, are we feeling this moment or are we like, meh? Obviously you can see it's touching me here. So this metal with in contact with my skin it's gonna this is not high quality costume jewelry so basically i do believe it's brass it's brass plated in silver so i do believe that uh with time it's going to wear off and the brass is going to show underneath and it's going to become you know like golden we love her jesus says it's very comfortable kev yes it is the pearls feel make it just feel so nice it's like something is massaging you it's not tight i can breathe really nicely i mean of course i can move you know without it restraining me at all if i were like to lay down and like, kind of do this with my neck obviously then it would tighten up because i'm like expanding my neck but if i'm just doing the normal stuff i would do with this thing on get your minds out of the gutter uh <laughs> then it's totally comfortable. It's super comfortable. Plus these pearls are so big. They just kind of always kind of, you know, they flow. Oh, and they have hand knotted between every, every pearl. There's a handmade knot. So they're, it's put together as if they were real pearls. Obviously they're not real pearls. Um, What do you guys think? So happy you got it in your collection. Ah, thank you, Cyber Coco. When I get the gold one, I'll be so happy. Oh, you're going to get the gold one? Mando says, oh my God, I love how the orb sits on your neck. Thank you, Mando. I mean, it is a little bit kinky, right? Because it's kind of like restraining. You know, it's like right there. Now, they say that it's supposed to sit on your collarbone. So all of the chicks that are modeling this online, they have really skinny necks and kind of their collarbones are sitting much low. So because I have a male physiognomy, um, this part of, you know, this whole neck part here is kind of more elevated. So my collarbone, so if I were to, there, you see, Cha. are we really doing the model pose? <laughs> like <a>, Y'all. <laughs> but anyway, my collarbone is there. So technically the orb, my collarbone ends right here. So the orb is like the, the tip of it is sitting on the collarbone. It is. But on some model pictures, this thing is hanging up to here. Monarch says, oh, I love this. I had it in my cart, but I got the multi-strand one instead. Ah, yes. But the choker version, because they have a newer multi-strand that is low, that it kind of hangs up to here. Cybercoco says, I have seriously been thinking eyeing this since it came out. Cybercoco, get the silver one. It makes more sense. I know I'm also all for gold hardware. I love gold hardware. Don't get me wrong. I always prefer gold to silver. This, it works in silver. It, it bounces off of the, and the pearls are a slight pinky pearl. Tube top, wide legs, bucket hat. Oh, Coco Kitty, we're serving Y2K, aren't we? Uh, <laughs> With a tube top. You look expansive, says Evelyn. There is a Duchess of Windsor feel to it. I love it. 
<laughs> so happy you got it. Well, thank you guys. Erex is very carpet. I love it. You can you can buy clasp or hook extender to make your necklace a little longer. Yes. I was thinking of doing that, although this is kind of special the way how tight it is. I don't know. Like I get it. It, it can be lower, but this like Does it have to be? I don't know. What if you wear the orb upside down? Oh, that's sacrilege, sacrilege, sacrilege. <laughs> no, as a headpiece, no, it's 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 too too small. I mean, like as a tiara, yeah, you would definitely need to find a way to fix it to the hair that doesn't fall off and you would need an extension to make it bigger. It can be lower, but then it's not gonna be a choker. If it's lower, it's not a choker. <laughs> Anna, keep your head high and you'll be fine. It looks good this way now already. Thank you. Yeah, lo love how tight it is. Looks more vampire-ish. Yes. And it actually only works so tight because the pearls are so huge. Like it has a... Uh, it gives it a more... meaning i think um if the pearls were really tiny and it was just like one strand of you know classic sized pearls and then tight maybe on a very very you know thin neck female body maybe it would work but on a guy i think when it's chunky it kind of contrasts the neck a little bit better because because i'm chunky and the thing is chunky so it kind of works it balances itself out a little bit more i don't know um, no, don't lower it. No, nope, it looks perfect as a choker, says Tina. All right, thanks, Tina. Yeah, keep your head high. Bobby Pips. Love how tight it looks. Uh, I wonder if you can wear it under the collar. Well, of a shirt. You mean over the collar? You mean under? So like, so like if you, if you don't have a t-shirt, just a shirt and you unbutton it. Yeah, 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 of course you can. Yeah, small pearls can look dowdy, but... These jumbo pearls are a fresh take. I also think it's a fresh take. And, you know, we're used to seeing these chokers and these necklaces with the Vivian Westwood orb. Um, but to see it with such a chunky... I mean, listen, the pearls could have been even bigger. You know what I mean? Size queen. But we're getting there. This is a very interesting take on it, I think, you know. You see, this is the kind of... In the back. You know. Ah! She is! She is the most... What do you think? You are not chunky. You have muscles. Saw them. <laughs> Como elita. Que estas diciendo? So, what outfit would you suggest to wear with this lovely piece? Mm. I think you could literally just wear like a regular t-shirt like this thing, like a little uniform moment. This is a great contrast. It gives it, it breaks it all apart because it's unexpected. But you can definitely be, not wear anything else, but just this. But then, if, if you want, I am really looking forward to wearing this with a clean white shirt with a really big collar, oversized shirt, and then open it up and have it unbuttoned up to down here or something, and then just have that there, and then skin here, the shirt is open, you have the collar, you know, and roll up the sleeves or let them lo hang loose. So the shirt has to contrast the neck. The necklace is a choker, but the shirt has to be oversized. So the shirt is the opposite. Oversized shirt, undersized choker. And then the pants, you could, if you like denim, just wear jeans. Or in my case, I don't really like jeans. I like more like sweatpants. I love Yoji Yamamoto. I love Y3. So everything Y3 for me is per in black. Little Rick Owens moment could go as well with this. Uh, yeah, it sits perfectly round a t-shirt neck uh, on you too. Blonde and chatty. Thank you. Yeah, er Ergoflux, it would look good with a V-neck. <laughs> We're back to the V-neck. For me, plain white t-shirt, also perfect. Um, neck short, turtleneck, mock neckline, black. Literally took the words out of my mouth. Definitely like the style you are going for. Right. But knowing me, knowing me and knowing all the... Is that ABBA moment? Oh my gosh. Okay. Now, I'm not going to get it out of my head now. Um, knowing me, I will definitely wear it in the most weird ways. Like, like for example, how I'm envisioning wearing it tomorrow, if I go to the movies or something, I am going to wear my Elvira, Mistress of the Dark, uh, crew neck, which is like 
a sweatshirt with like long sleeves. It's a black sweatshirt, and there's like gorgeous print of Elvira uh, on the front with like purple and well black, purple, all the Halloween hues. Like she's printed all over, but it's like a long sleeve crew neck, you know, sweater or sweatshirt. And I'll just wear this on top. And then sometimes it's going to kind of hide underneath. Sometimes it's going to come on top. You know, it's going to just whatever. Like it, they don't match at all. But I like that. I like when things just clash. So I'm also um, <laughs> with the vampire cape. <laughs> and I do have a few of those. How do you know? Uh, and then other than that, I uh, was thinking... <sighs> I don't know, just simply this. Big unbuttoned blouson shirt, like silk shirt, pirate pants, uh, feathered tricorn hat. Yes, vampire cape. Everybody wants the vampire cape. Yeah. Loving the rise of appreciation for Westwood. Oh, Arlen, I mean, I've always been a fan. But I'm glad that also lately the videos that I make about Vivian are, um, get more views. Like, people are more excited. Uh, this is really, really great for me because she really deserves i mean she's the last living legend from back in the day that still works still designs she's in her 80s y'all and she's the innovation of most of fashion that we know today is thanks to her <laughs> whether willingly or un or unwillingly knowingly or unknowingly she's done most of the work uh trailblazing a ton of stuff in the 70s and 80s in particular so It's great. It feels great to buy something from Vivian Westwood while she's alive. You know? I mean, I love buying my Chanel costume jewelry and pieces, but, you know, that stuff that's designed today after Coco has passed away, it's not purely her vision. Now, I know that a lot of people work for Vivian Westwood. It's not like she designs every piece individually, but she oversees stuff. You know, there's still some way, shape or, shape or form, a seal of approval of some kind. And she's there to deliver. You know, she's like, this is, this is done under her tutelage. She's alive. So for me, there's an extra special meaning to, to, to the pieces that are done while the designer is still alive. You know, I think this looks just great like this, says Kev. Thank you, Kev. She's as old as my grandma. Bless her heart, says Zinison. Arlen says, oh my God, I just found the crystal teddy bear earrings. Aren't they amazing? And Arlen, they have the little teeny tiny teddy bear earrings this season. Guess what? A couple of seasons ago, they had a teddy bear necklace. The teddy bear was this big. Yeah, this big with moving arms and legs in crystals hanging off a chunky chain and it was like hanging here. It was ginormous. It was awesome. I didn't get a chance to get that one. David Mar, Reika Vakubo, Yoji Yamamoto. Yes, very Yoji. We love Yoji. I wear a lot of Yoji. Uh, but the difference between Yoji Yamamoto and Vivian Westwood is that Yoji costs four times more than her. Than her. So, <laughs> you know, there, you got to say that as well. Like she's still in that range where it's luxury, but it's still expensive. But look, if this were Chanel, it wouldn't be better quality. I don't know. <laughs> hmm. This would cost almost $3,000. Okay, three thousand dollars it would be probably, um, but it's Vivian Westwood, so it's around about four hundred. That's a huge difference. Still expensive, still for some standards like crazy. Why would somebody spend so much on this? But for a person like me who loves fashion, who collects fashion, who respects and adores Vivian Westwood so much, for me this falls into that price category where. If I really love a piece, I will buy it. Now, if this were Chanel and I really loved it and it was like $3,000, I would be like, yeah, do I really love it that much? <laughs> yeah, I would be like, no, I probably don't. Most of pieces are doable. Luxury without breaking your arm. Right. I mean, again, you know, we all, we, we all have different budgets, but I'm, all I'm just saying is like within that category of luxury, even though she doesn't care for that term, I still consider her luxury. You can still go to Westwood and get a couture, 
gown made for you, you know, wedding dresses or couture in general, like they have a department for that as well. I mean, they are very advanced. It's not just, you know, stuff made quickly. No, there's a lot going down there. And a lot of it is very unique and special. So with Vivian, you do get luxury. You get the luxury feel. You get the luxury vibes. But thankfully, you get a price that other luxury brands had 15 years ago. Vivian still has those prices today. So that is definitely props. Second thing that I really like about Vivian is that, well, she's punk. Her pieces are punk. When she designed her broken pearl necklace, it's it, it's kind of a choker as well, but then a part of the strands are like purposefully broken and they hang. Um her whole vision for that piece is that you wear it and that it unravels with time even more and gets damaged and dented and discolored. Uh, that's the punk attitude. The same applies to this. She wants this to corrode. She actually wants this to get dense and discolor and the pearls to get dense in them. Like she doesn't want this to be preppy and clean. I know that a lot of the in particular Asian clients that Vivian Westwood has, South Korea, Japan, they love the preppy Alice in Wonderland look for Vivian Westwood. Uh, but that's not Vivian Westwood. I mean, she had a moment when she was doing the Alice in Wonderland shtick back in the 90s, but she moved on from that. Oh, did she ever. <laughs> so, in reality, her vision of things, the, the real, you know, the essence. So, th this is the best Vivian Westwood stuff you can get at the moment are these... Um, are pieces like this, you know, the Made in Africa collections. This is the stuff that's closest to her heart. <laughs> and it is a heart, coincidentally. Um, you know, working with the community of the artists in Kenya, uh, mostly women, uh, that make these pieces. And th that's kind of the, the core punk of kind of how fashion can help communities as well. Uh, but when it comes to pieces like this, it's like, wear it, tear it, make it punk. And, and that wouldn't fly with a lot of other brands, but with Westwood, the more you use the piece and the more it kind of gets its dents, the edgier it looks and the more Westwood it looks. So there's that also playing in its favor, that you're kind of less obsessed with not getting a scratch on the pieces. Something to think about as well. <laughs> Sinison says, you nailed the clean prep look in Korea and Japan. Nothing against the clean preppy look, don't get me wrong, but that is the part of how they perceive Vivian Westwood is that clean, you know, the heart jacket, the red kind of the rider jacket with the black heart uh, or the black jacket with the red heart. She did both versions. That's kind of, and the rocking horse shoe in the ballerina form. Now, who knows if you know, so knows what I'm talking about. And the, 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 the top hat, the cylinder top hat, everything is very, you know, and then a little skirt that opens up, a little peplumy moment, uh, white stockings, white tights with the uh, ballerina tied up, a rocking horse shoe. Like, that's the look that, that we know th that, you know, Asia usually loves uh, from Vivian Westwood. But but that was her 90s look. So now she's like somewhere else right now, you know. So Gothic Lolita rocking horse shoes. Yes, Coco Kitty. Yes, the rocking horse shoes are still in production. Yes. Ergo Flux, the symbol. So this is a very interesting uh, collection from the 90s where she envisioned the future of uh, of royalty. But she took the emblem of Harris Tweed to make the flat version. But she created the world's first three-dimensional logo. Vivian Westwood did everything first, really. I mean, in many ways, well, since she was born, right? So technically, her orb is three-dimensional. I also have a couple of her orb necklaces. So it does go all around. You can see here on the perfume, the orb is like the ring of Saturn around a planet. And her logo is three-dimensional. Up until that point, logos were always B-dimensional. So she created these, so this vision of monarchy or royalty in the future, but here's the twist. She made everybody wear it. So in reality, it's very punk. What she's saying is everybody's royalty. 
and nobody is. You want to be royal? Wear a crown. Bottom line. So she made it accessible to everyone. That was her idea. That's where this stems from. Now, because the flat version of the orb that's surrounded by the ring uh, is uh, also Harris Tweed. <laughs> Harris Tweed came for her. There was a little bit of a legal dispute, but they settled actually really nicely. Now they work together. One of the most beautiful tweeds to come out of England come from Vivian Westwood because she works with Harris Tweed and they make beautiful coats garments, jackets, pants, skirts, bags. Like, Chanel, take a, take a hint. <laughs> you want good tweed, you know? But Harris tweed, it, it, Harris tweed is a different type of tweed. Chanel does fantasy tweeds very well. Vivian does Harris tweed very well. They're, they're two different types of tweeds. I want the Vivian Westwood Nana armor ring, mm, but they're too big for my fingers. Oh, well, they have different sizes. They have a lot of different sizes. <laughs> yes, Sinisan, buy a crown from Walmart and a Birkin, right? But you have to understand, like back in the day, when she came up with this concept, nobody worked in that direction. She was, again, the first one to envision like a future where you're noble as much as you want to be. And I think that was a very, you know, especially considering Great Britain, and they have the monarchy. So to think that way within that context, and when you put it in that context, then this is revolutionary. Obviously, the rest of the world wearing these pieces, it's more kind of because you're a fan of Vivian Westwood, obviously, not because you have some political agenda. You might, but if you really have a political agenda in your bag, you're not going to wear this piece. This piece is a little bit too preppy for that, you know. Anyway. I hope you've enjoyed this very long unboxing reveal video. Uh, that's why I always refer you as a renaissance man, my love. Oh, you pull off that vibe so well. Visionary and artistic with the story. Thank you so much. It looks it's very fascinating. Thank you for the explanation. Love your passion and knowledge. Thank you, guys. You know I wouldn't purchase anything without, like, doing my research, you know. I, this is always say. Be enthusiastic about it. It's not like we got to be scared about consumption. We are consumers. <laughs> That's how our society is built up. So we're kind of also brainwashed to consume. But as long as you do your research and you know what you're buying and you know the reasons behind it, you do your research, you do your aesthetics, aesthetical research, design history research, and you know what you're purchasing and you know the reasons why you're purchasing it for yourself, you're still in the green area in terms of, okay, maybe there's a little bit of brainwashing going on there and like a purchase that is being done because brand marketing got to you and the FOMO got to you, but also... Um, you're purchasing something because you know that it's something you really want. And you know it because you've done your research, you know? And by doing your research, I don't say like, oh, some influencer showed it to me on Instagram. No. no. I'm talking about knowing the history of the logo. You're asking like, what does the logo mean? I told you what the logo means. The pearls. What does the pearls mean? What does the necklace mean? What does the choker mean? What does the broken necklace mean with the pearls that she made? You know, the whole conceptuality that goes behind it. Every, all of that knowledge is in me. And then I buy this. If you made it thus far in the video, <laughs> post a dinosaur <laughs> emoji in the comment section down below and let me know your thoughts uh, also in the comment section down below. And until next time, never forget to never give up on love. Subscribe.